This video has two main chapters, carving the belly and carving the back. However, before we start, I'm going to introduce you to the body carving blank and show you its main features. You can save the offcuts for paint sampling later. You'll see that the body blank has lots of pencil lines and pre-drilled holes. I'm going to show you what these mean. This hole is for attaching the front legs, and these two holes are for attaching the back legs. This large hole is for embedding the eyes. These two circular areas need to remain flat after carving, so that the legs can rotate neatly. The two side views, or profile views of the puppet, are a mirror image of one another, and they have the same overall outline or shape. The front view and the back view of the puppet also have the same outline or shape. This hole is for inserting the puppet control. There is also a pencil line running down the centre of each side of the puppet. These are called the high points. They divide the body into four segments so that the belly has two segments and the back has two segments. When carving, we will leave these pencil lines uncarved. This ensures that we don't alter the overall shape of the puppet. We will carve in between the pencil lines to transform the square corners into smooth curves. Chapter 1 Carving the belly, segments one and two. We will start by carving one segment of the belly. It helps if you think of the belly as like a hill. For example, whenever you're carving a block of wood and you want to carve that block into a curved shape, so long as the grain of the wood is running along the length of the block, then you should be able to carve downhill with the grain. Looking at the hair body, the wood grain is running along the length of the body. So the top of the hair's chest is like the top of the hill. This creates two downhill carving directions. This is much easier than trying to carve uphill in the other direction. Step 1. Carve downhill towards the neck. Use the whittling hold. Use your index finger as an anchor and brace the back of the blade with your thumb. Remember, you can brace the piece against your body as well. I also recommend that you wear a finger guard for all carving. This project prompted me to make my own so I don't actually start wearing one in the demos until video 5, but you can wear yours from the start. See video 2 for carving safety. Use small strokes and take your time. Use the hare's neck as a carving stop. Just let the knife run into it as you carve. You might be wondering how much you need to carve. You can carve up to and around the marked circle and no further than the central pencil line below the neck and no further than the central pencil line on the chest. Here is my progress so far. I've left some wood uncarved in the centre, for now. I've carved around the top of the circle. And I've left a little bit of wood uncarved near the neck, for now. 
there is a sharp peak forming near the top of the hill. At this point, you can try carving in the opposite direction. Step 2. Carving downhill in the opposite direction. Continue to use the whittling hold. Use small strokes and take your time. Stop when you get to the edge of the bottom circle. You can work your way backwards towards that central peak. Step 3. Once you've tried both carving directions, you can alternate between those two directions until you've smoothed out that peak in the centre. Here is the first belly segment after carving. This is what you're aiming for before you move on to the next segment. You'll see I have carved up to and around the circle and almost up to the central pencil line on the side and up to the central pencil line on the front stopping about here. Now you're ready to repeat the whole process on the opposite side. Step 4. Carving the second belly segment. I'm not going to repeat the carving demo for the second segment, but here are the carving directions for the opposite side. They are a mirror image of what you've already done. Here's a speedy recap of the knife holds as well, in case it's helpful. Here's what you're aiming for after carving both of the belly segments. It should look roughly symmetrical. and the belly should form a smooth curve. Here's a comparison with an uncarved body blank. You can see the difference the curve makes. Chapter 2. Carving the back. Segments 3 and 4. Like with the belly, we'll start by carving one segment of the back. This time, you can think of carving the back as like carving a valley. For example, if you have a block of wood and you want to carve that block of wood into a concave shape, then so long as the grain of the wood is running along the length of the block, you should be able to carve downhill with the grain towards the bottom of the valley. If we look at the hare's body, the wood grain is running along the length of the body. So the small of the back is like a bottom of a valley. This creates two carving directions, carving downhill into that valley. 
There is also a third carving direction for carving the hairs back. It's subtle, but there's a kind of plateau area running up to the hair's neck. We're actually going to curve this in slightly towards the neck, which means we're carving very slightly downhill. Step one, carve downhill towards the neck. Continue to use the whittling hold. As before, remember you can brace the piece against your body. Carve towards the neck and just let the shavings build up. If they flake off naturally, let them, but don't try and rip them off. Like before, carve no further than the edge of the circle and no further than the central pencil lines. Step two, carve downhill towards the small of the back as shown. As always, continue to use the whittling hold. For this stage, you'll find that lots of shavings start to build up in the small of the back. As before, don't try and rip them off, just let them build up. And as before, carve no further than the edge of the circles and no further than the central pencil lines. Here is my progress so far. I have carved up to and around the circle edge. And I have carved almost up to the central pencil lines. I have left some wood uncarved near the centre of the back. And I've let the wood shavings gather in the middle. Step three, carve downhill towards the small of the back as shown here. This is a tricky angle to carve from, so make sure you find a grip that's comfortable for you. I found I had to brace the piece against my body for the demo. You should find that as you carve, the shavings in the middle start to flake away.
Step four, alternate between the two valley carving directions. I found that some more shavings built up during step three. So you can alternate between the two carving directions until the bottom of the valley is smoothed out. Here is the first back segment after carving. This is what you're aiming for before you move on to the other segment. As always, I've carved up to and around the edge of the circles and almost up to the central pencil lines. As a finishing touch, you can knock off the edge of that bottom circle, so it's not such a sharp corner. Step 5. Carving the second back segment. You can now repeat the process for the second back segment. Here's a recap of the carving directions, this time a mirror image to before. Finally, this is what you're aiming for after all four segments have been carved. This concludes the teaching for video three, but you can keep watching for a bit more before and after footage if it's helpful. In the next video, we'll carve the hair's front legs.